Hi everyone, this is module number 74 for the subject of SHRM. And in this module, we will discuss about the application of the resource based view to the firm. And in this module, particularly, we will focus on the human capital advantage. I hope you people will recall that in the last module, I was talking about the competencies or the knowledge or skills of the employees. So resource-based view has become the dominant theoretical framework within the SHRM field. People believe in it and people argue that this is one of the most viable way or most valid attribute in an organization and HR strategy that can facilitate an organization to achieve or develop a sustainable competitive advantage. It has attracted a great deal of attention. The reason is that what you have in the organization is to a greater extent in your control. This is in sharp contrast to the Michael Porter School of Thought, which suggests that the external environment can be negotiated or you can deal with the external environment. If successfully, then you can have a competitive advantage. So it helps to explain how HRM impacts on organizational performance and it, it emphasizes the role of human resource management. This resource-based view actually led the foundations, if not the foundations, then something which is impetus for the importance of strategic human resource management. So it sheds light on the complexity of the HR system at the same time. When we are talking about the human capital, when we are talking about the employee motivation, when we are talking about that, it is the employees of an organization that can help to develop and generate a competitive advantage, then there are a lot of complexities associated with this notion or with this idea. So, right at all, when I say at all, means the colleagues in 1994 writes in their page at 394 that HR is the pool of human capital under a firm's control in a direct employment relationship. So, as I said before that, the HR is a pool of resources that is in a direct control of the organization. So, firms that recruit and effectively deploy people with high caliber of skills, capabilities are more likely to secure a sustainable competitive advantage. So this is a general prescription for the organizations that those firms who are able to secure the human capital or the people with talent, skills and knowledge are more likely to secure a sustainable competitive advantage. So individuals' KSA, knowledge, skills, and abilities, and their behavior can be a potential source of advantage. Now the question is whether you hire the employees who have those knowledge, skills, and abilities, or you hire the employees and you develop this, the relevant knowledge, skills, and abilities. One thing we need to understand that the market is volatile. Innovation and technology is keep on changing every day. So you cannot have the knowledge and the skills that can last forever. As any osakta ki aapke jo skills hain ya abilities hain. Abilities are quite natural. You bring when you join the organization. Your personal abilities, your mental abilities, and your cognitive abilities, your physical abilities. They are quite built in your nature or in your personality. But when we talk about the knowledge and the skills and knowledge is transferred into the skills, we are talking something about which people learn in everyday profession and in their everyday life. Now the question is that if an organization hire an employee or hire employees who possess that knowledge and the skills that are relevant to that particular industry, they must offer the culture or a knowledge culture where employees continuously 
able to gain the updated knowledge and develop the skills. For this reason, you may have to invest in people. Invest in training and development. Because every company cannot invest in training and development. And every company is not able to offer a culture where employees are willing to learn. This type of competitive advantage could be rare and may not be easy to imitate or replicate. Thank you.